Uh, next session is uh, from Martha uh, about the big data intelligence things. Uh, I, I am the Martha, you may be able to. 2012, I think. I, I'm a newcomer from this company. This company is yes, the first team uh, I collaborated with Martha. But in currently, Martha is promoted to. すごい very much for the special introduction. So sorry. So, uh, yes, my name is Shubima. So, thanks very much for coming this session. So today, so I will give a rough talk about how we are delivering the value or the data. Uh, through our routines, big data intelligence, ecosystem, and the technology. So before starting, I want to ask some questions. So for all the people here, who is working related to data now? So please raise your hand. Okay, not that much. And who is using, uh, who is working to use data related to the business side? Okay, yeah, thank you very much. So, uh, Okay, so I will try to uh, give you a rough image about which kind of data we have in this company and how we are using in our services. So before starting, please let me give a simple introduction. So before joining Rockton, so I working, uh, I studied speech processing in the University of Tokyo. At that time, so the biggest challenge part for me is data. So I need to record and label a lot of data by myself. It's really tough at the time. So. That's why after my graduation, so I joined Rockton. So because Rockton have many, many services, it means many data, and also the Englishization. So you can speak English here. And then several years later, uh, several years before, so data science become more and more popular. So said by the Harvard Business, data scientist is the sexiest job of the 21st century. So because of this, I transferred to the data science department and working as a data science engineer. Only speaking, so about whether it's sexy or not, I don't know. But it's very interesting because you can handle many, many data you want. Uh, so as uh, Kaobisan explained, so now I'm working as a senior manager for data science department uh, section. So my main work is how to use data to empower the whole uh, services in Rockton Group. So t for today's talk, I will give a rough introduction about our data and services. Then I will explain Rockton's data value chain. After that, so uh, I will introduce one centralized user insight platform we are building. And at the end, so I will introduce some utilization examples with this platform. So first introduction part. I think people here might already know Rockton well, so it's kind of a very simple introduction. The company is founded 20 years ago, so this is just the 20th anniversary of Rockton. And here is our main office, and you can see, uh, it's a very beautiful place. I hope you enjoy today here. And also now we have more than uh, 14,000 regular employees in Rockton. So Rockton started the service with the EC, uh, Rockton Ichiba. Then now we expand our service to many different fields like the travel gala and the media, uh, sports and uh, life insurance, also many fintech services like security, bank and card. So for so many different services means we have many different data covers in these kind of different topics. And also, we have a very strong membership program, which is connecting all our services by the same ID. It means you can use one ID to use all the services in our group. Besides that, so thanks to our super point reward system, so the course service usage is increasing yearly and yearly. So I think at the end of this last year, the course service usage is about 60% in our group. And Basically about the reward system is, the more service you use, the more points you get. And now I think as soon as you meet all these conditions, for every purchase, you can enjoy eight times points. So please buy more. 
And thanks to our ecosystem, membership system, and point reward system. So we have a huge amount of data with many, uh, how to say, for covering many different industries. So here's some numbers to explain, uh, to give you some image about our data. Like we have more than 1 billion global members who are using more than 17 services all over the, uh, all over the world. And also our last year's global growth uh, transaction volume is more than 10 trillion Japanese yen. Besides having this kind of data, we also focusing how to use this kind of data statistically. So basically, so Mickey mentioned we want to empower uh, our services, especially e-commerce, fintech, but what is business and investment using our big data. So next, I will introduce how we are delivering the data value through our big data value chain. So for this is uh, roughly three steps. I think it's no big difference to other companies. So first is the data collection. Second is the data arrangement. Uh, the last part is the data utilization. So about data collections, very rough uh, categories. We have the service data, like the transaction or the user information. Also, we have behavior data. So you come to Rockland service, you click which link, and you visit some page. All this information is behavior data. Some data is stru structured data, some data is unstructured data. Uh, for gathering this kind of data, different technology is using. For example, in order to get the real-time behavior data, so we're using Kafka and Storm, and uh, also sometimes we're using Spark Streaming to stream all the data to our uh, platform. <laughs> After the data is collected, so in fact there's many different kind of data solutions we are using, but the biggest the two solution here is the Teladata solution and Hadoop. Uh, first of all, Teladata is mainly using to arrange the structured data like the service transaction data, and we build a lot of data mart for analysis purpose. Also for Hadoop, I think it's the most common uh, solutions for past several years. So basically we're using the Hadoop to build our data leak to gather all the data to Hadoop. With all the data in Teladata and Hadoop, we are also building the data mart and some data product to provide a different service for them to use. So about the utilization, I think uh, one important part is the uh, data intelligence. So now in our company, we're using the Domo and uh, Pablo and uh, MicroStrategy for the BI and the dashboard. Besides that, so we also create a lot of product using the data in our internal products for personalization, marketing, automation, and AI. Last but maybe the most important, so in order to use all this kind of data properly, so we have one data governance team to make sure we are using the data and not breaking law and make using it properly. So in order to accelerate all the data, how to say, delivery speed and reducing the operation cost, Operation cost is always a big part for the people to using all the data. So that's why we are building various products. And one product recently we are building is one centralized user insight platform across the whole Rockland group. And we call it Rockland DNA. So let me show you some example about how we could understand our customer using Rockland data. So for example, so here is the one user and one customer. So we know this customer is male, is 22 years old. And we know he's a heavy Rockland user because he's Diamond members and he's using the Planchin card or Rockland card. And also he's buying a lot of things in each bar, he's playing golf regularly. So besides this kind of information, we can know for wine, he always buys some high-end expensive wines. And for fashions, he always buys some, how to say, very cool stuff about the fashions. So we, yeah, and with all these kind of information, we can apply some machine learning approach to also predict uh, predict some information this customer didn't register to our system. Like, we guess this customer must be a Sarni man and uh, working with somewhere, how to say, as maybe some manager role and uh, play, because he's play golf a lot. And also he must have a very good salary. So of course, give you all this kind of data, you can guess these kind of things, but for all the users and, can, and get this kind of insight automatically. 
So it's what we are trying to do. So here's how we are building this. So first for all the services like the Ichiba, Trevo, Mobile, Cobo, and many, many services, we are using two main approach to get the, uh, to build this customer DNA. First is very simple, is do the ETL, so get an aggregate information to our platform. Second, we're using some machine learning approach to predict the feature to the system. And after this uh, platform is building, so we can connect this uh, platform directly to the product and to our service and using it for some like web personalization and shopping recommendations and mail targeting and advertisement optimization. I will give some examples about the feature we are building and one very simple ETL type is a shopping behavior, uh, shopping interest feature, so which is mainly built based on the user's purchase behavior and your visit behavior and also your search behaviors. So give one example. If the people is purchasing a lot of pet related things like the pet clothes and pet card or some other things, also he's winning a lot of pet related pages, also he's searching some a lot of related keywords. So we know this customer must be interested in pet goods. And also by how frequently he do this kind of search and purchase, we know how heavily these people is interested in pet. Then using this kind of simple feature, we can do some marketing solution like the email targeting. So for example, in Rocketing, uh, in Rocketing Travel, we have some pretty good pet friendly hotels. So that's why for, for the event pages, we can send in these kind of hotels to targeting the user who are interested in pet goods. So as a result, you can see the open rate increase about 5% and the click rate after the open rate increase about 218, uh, 17,000. So it's great lift. Mm. Another example is a little statis uh, statistic approach. It's the shopping um, price preferences. For example, so we did some analysis about our Ichiba purchase behaviors for different genres and specific genres, like for wines, for earphones, or some genres. Uh, the user's purchase behavior should a lot of information or consistency. If you're buying some high-end wines, next time most of the chance you'll buy high-end wines. You're buying good earphone, you'll buy good earphone next time. So because of this kind of information, we'll build many of these kind of shopping price preference DNA. And then using this kind of DNA, so we are doing the personalization for our web pages. For example, for the high-end uh, high-end users in the rice genre, so we are promoting some organic rice to these users. And for some uh, low-end price preference customers, we are showing some high cost performance items to them. Besides the, the ETL and very simple statistic way, we also using uh, machine, machine learning and deep learning and the GPU. So I think many people maybe join the, the session there, so like RNA or some other things. So we're using our approach to predict the features. Like the, uh, first is, with all the customers, is like their behaviors, how many things they buy and how they are seeing the items, all these kind of things. So we will do the feature extraction. It means the data representations. Now some approach like the node to vector or some, some of the deep learning model is using here. And after that, so we can use some machine learning approach to predict this user's features and then put it to the customer DNA. So give you one, uh, how to say, very simple example about which kind of things is happening like. Take the income prediction as one example. So some users register their income range to our services, but for many users, we don't know about that. But the hypothesis is if the people have high income, they will buy and behavior very similar in our services. So if we analyze and extract their features, then we found the similar users to the high income users. We can predict this customer must be high income users. So we ap apply this approach uh, to our, and we test this approach using our research research services survey data. So many people answer their income range and we tested with this. As a result, we can predict whether our customers are high income customers 
or low-income customers with a accuracy about eight, uh, 81 percentage. Also, we can adjust our parameters, try to increase the coverage of our customers, or to increase the accuracy of the customers. Besides the feature income, I want to show this uh, prediction. So this framework is using to predict uh, the shopping genders. So you know, uh, it's very interesting that some people's shopping behaviors might be quite different to what they registered to the system. There's many reasons. For example, uh, for the family's users, maybe the mother is buying a lot of things, not only for herself, but also for the whole family. So for common, uh, marketing solution, we are just targeting the user based on their genders, but in fact, we should targeting the shared account users for family things. So that's why so we predict whether uh, their shopping genders is not their physical genders. And we found in Rock Nishiba that almost 13% of users are shared accounts. So I think past ex uh, examples maybe quite simple and uh, how to say marketing solutions are very simple so, uh, personalization solutions. So I think many other companies might doing this kind of thing already. And then what's the difference for Rakuten? I think the most difference is the data coverage and the data uh, diversity. And thanks to all this kind of data, after we understanding our customers, we can do consistently uh, customer relationship management in whole Rakuten. Let me give you some example. For example, using customer DNA, so we can use this to analyze our target user. For example, for one brand of items, we have many users, let's say one million users buy this product. Then using this customer DNA, we can analyze uh, to understand who are these customers, what's their features. So profiling these features, like what's their demographic information, what's their uh, purchase uh, trend and also many, many complicated elements you could do. So with that, we can do some look-like function to expand the users. I think Facebook and Google, they are very good at look-like because they have a lot of data and for the uh, browser information and the search information. But for Rocketing, the difference is most of our data is conversion information. So I believe it's more stronger indicator to uh, do the look-like for our users. So after the understanding the users and create a different segment of the customers, so what we could do? Of course, for different customers, so we, will do, we can take different actions for the customer nurturing. For example, uh, for different segments, we can give them different pages. And then uh, after they come and buy some things, we can continuously to communicate with the customers by direct email or by the email. For example, uh, for some females who are interested in cost mix in each bar, so basically at the beginning, we can show different kind of cost mix item at the beginning. Then later, for the light customers, basically we can send some sample by direct emails, try to convert these customers to heavy users in the future. And also for the heavy uh, customer, because they're already buying a lot of things in each bar by Cosmix, what we could do is we can predict the period about their uh, repurchase. Then when the timing coming, we can send some email and ask them whether they will rebuy the similar items for their daily use. So this is some example about that. And besides that, so by providing different uh, contents to different customer segments, we can also using reinforced algorithm. I think this is also mentioned by the Tellier's presentation. So we can, using some like bounded algorithm to discover which kind of matching is the best for our users. For example, for three different uh, creatives, so we are sending to three different kind of clusters. So for every interaction, we will check the feedback and the performance, and then reflect the ratio sharing for different segments. By keep doing this kind of thing, we can find the best mapping about our creatives and our customer users. And with this kind of information, uh, with this kind of approach, it will not only reduce the opportunity lost for A-B test, but also we can find a lot of interesting insight about our segments and the customers. 
for example, so we're using this approach in our supercell, and I think it's two years ago. So we prepared eight clusters about our segment, like heavy user, light users, and also we prepared six different pages. Then we're using our bounded algorithm to do the uh, uh, to do the solutions. Basically, as a result, we get 15 percentage of CVR leaf comparing to the common A/B test. And besides that, so we get a lot of additional insight. Like for heavy users, we found uh, the pages with the coupon get the best performance. So many people were using this this page. And also for the super light customers. So like the pages with the campaign entry and the explanation get the best performance. Then as the further campaigns, we can try to show more, com more coupons, more campaigns to our uh, heavy users, try to get more GMS lift for that. So it's very quick. So basically, that's all for my presentation. So I think we have several for questions. Uh, we have several minutes then to transition, but then if you have any question, yeah, please. Uh, okay, yeah, question. Uh, if you have any questions, if you have any questions, if you have any questions, if you Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hello, my name is Charlie. I'm from the United States. Um, I was like, so when you're explaining the um, the market analysis, I was wondering how do you segregate the male and female um, shopping habits? Because, um, for, like you said, they might share the same account to double up on points. So how can you make that brief, um, the segregation? Mm -hmm. So basically, so I think for 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 our purposes, kind of how to use this kind of segment, right? So it depends on what's the purpose for us. Like if you want to do some recommendation and do some targeting, basically you want, uh, how to say, for family users, we need to give them the family goods or some other things. Like recently it's Halloween, so we have the different pages. For shared account of the segment, we will give the family goods for them. How do you determine if it's family or <laughs> just somebody buying something for a friend? Uh, it's a good question. Basically, it's that's based on their purchase behavior and browser behaviors. Like some items were obviously kind of female items. Some items kind of were obviously male items. So this is first information. Second is of course the frequency. Uh, if you only buy one time, one time for the female things and male things, maybe it's just the forgive or some other things. So yes. So it's a long-term forecast. Yes, yes, yes. Basically, we're using one-year data to, to do this kind of period window to predict the feature segments. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so basically, so we have one booth there. So if you have any questions, so please feel free to visit the booth, and we can talk more about the data information. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you.